So I've decided to give my life to this gift that has so generously blessed me with fresh steeds and dope dreams, see. It wasn't so long ago that CC, that's me, was a bumbling hip-hop head wannabe with a penchant for penmanship but the voice of a 10th grade band geek squeezing words out his acne cheeks while his knees knock furiously like some sort of twitch disease, honestly. How far can a kid go when his words are so full and his rhymes have sick flow but his look is so, so? How loud can his voice ring when he can't sing and his tone makes him sound like a goat with a bee sting? How high can his poem score when he mumbles more than the married man at the porn store? Well, evidently he can go pretty far. And apparently his voice can ring. And obviously, his poems score higher than the note the fat lady sings when the buzzer went to give Kobe his fifth ring. It's that bling bling that I'm chasing. Not the diamond, mind you, but the sign that it signifies the greatness is truly defined. Not by your shine or the weight of your dime, but by what you've accomplished in your time. I hope to be up there one day. Lining the hollowed walls of wooden halls with my picture and name in a neat wooden frame next to the great ones, who achieved infinitely more than anybody other than themselves could have ever believed it's my dream. To one day have my name mentioned among the stars. To have my writing debated in bars. To have my poetry playing in cars while my message manifests itself both near and far. They'll say I was one of the prophets. Who never gave in the prophet. But instead spit words of knowledge to the masses. Blessing them with lessons of freshness and potions of dopeness. So dope that you could smoke it. I started out as a poet. Until the crowd gave me props and this poet became a prophet. And if this prophet turns a prophet it's just because the true speaker needs to eat too. So that his voice will stay strong to speak. God didn't put Elijah in the desert for days without giving him some bread and some raven's meat to eat. See, my words are elite, but my swagger is weak. They told me to be a spoken word poet, I needed to have all the arrogance of a rapper, with all the confidence of an actor and all the steel nerves of a computer hacker. Told me the great ones are born to do what they do, and the okay ones can do it too, just not as well as the great ones do. But me, I've seen enough to know that the only time success comes before work is in the dictionary. And I've seen enough to realize that our lives are not destined for greatness if we embrace the waste and accept complacence on a daily basis. See, in these human races, I aim to be the runner leading the pack. Not the one flagging at the back waiting for a chance to attack or the one hoping his teammates will pick up the slack because yes, this human race that we run is a relay, but lately the baton is not being passed around nearly enough. So I stand on this soapbox of a stage to say that sometimes life is rough and it's bound to feel that way. But stand sure, little sisters. Chin up, little brothers. Because the only battles that can't be won are the ones wandering around in our minds. Defeat them, and you'll suddenly find that your mind's eye is less blind, and you'll be more inclined to write a dope piece or drop a hot line, so shine. Show nothing but love to those who hate you, and grace when they berate you. Always think a step ahead like a carpenter building stairs. Speak truth with your words, and wisdom with your acts. And when your actions exhibit love and grace, do like my boy Francis says, and use your temples. Give the world something to meditate on. Let your light shine like the sun's rays at the daybreak of dawn so when you yawn, you can rest easy knowing you've made the world a better place that day and you sleep only with the intention of dreaming even bigger dreams. These are the lessons I learned on the way to attaining greatness. Like if laughter is contagious, let's start an epidemic. Spread that sickness around the world like a systematic menace until the heavens themselves rumble thunder to join us in laughter. And when lightning crashes, we know that's just God signing his God graph on the sky as if to say, now there is the joy that I modeled the world after. And see, on that day, my name will join the list of greats. Lining the hollowed walls of wooden halls with my picture and name in a neat wooden frame, they'll say I was one of the prophets. A true poet with props who spit words of knowledge and buried complacence in a coffin. A prophet who blessed the masses with lessons of freshness and potions of dopeness. And a writer who wrote lines so divine that his rhymes have stood the test of time. And in the pages of history have been enshrined, so though he now lies comatose, the world knows that his legacy lies in the lines of his prophetic pages and his poetic prose. And a soft heart and a strong soul, he's a poet. Now see, he finally knows it. You can hear in his voice when he speaks and finally shows it. And the grace and the truth that astound when this poet owns it. It's his calling in life you can tell this poet chose it. Dropping knowledge and sick flow so hot that the mic glows and poetry so dope you can smoke it.